the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. Many people felt I was a little critical of the Elegoo Saturn III Ultra. Some, in fact, felt I was overly harsh. Okay, I was naughty enough to compare it to the Uniformation GK2, but my overall findings was that it was a capable printer. I felt it was overly priced for what it was. It lacked any of the innovative features that we were seeing on other brands at that time. Well, I can't help but wonder if that struck a nerve with Enigu, because let me tell you from the right off, this is the most innovative printer Elegu has ever produced. It's an attractive machine, covered with white stripes that you'll either care for or won't. And unlike any Elegu that's gone before to my knowledge, it has a flip top lid. And as I've said previously, I've grown to love these. They're very convenient with great access. The problem is there's no lip. There's no handle, there's nothing to grab. So easy one-handed operation isn't possible, which ruins the whole thing. It's a stupid oversight. The next strange thing is the appearance of the build plate. And I did wonder, sorry Eligu, if this is what the plate on the Uniformation GK2 looks like under all that plastic. It even clips in place in a very similar manner. The resin tray certainly differs though. It's fairly standard in appearance with a nice clear PFA release liner. But the sides are much deeper than we've seen before. Just like with the Saturn III Ultra, the power point, power switch, USB port and Wi-Fi antenna are on the right hand side. But now they're more inconveniently placed at the back and strangely flipped vertically. The menu screen has also flipped on its head, giving us a portrait aspect for the first time. Whilst I like the appearance, which is certainly helped with an attractive and easy to use user interface, to me, it does feel smaller. In fact, when trying to type in my Wi-Fi username and password, there was no way my fingers could ever tap these keys. And without the heat from my fingertips, the screen wasn't as responsive. When I first turned on this printer, I got all excited to see that it was monitoring temperature. Now, there was no sign of any heater, either inside the box or on the printer itself. But I wondered if, like the Uniformation GK2 again, Eligu were going to use the heat generated by the printer itself to warm the resin. But no, they haven't. Sure, the Ultra 4 monitors the temperature, but it's only as a means to protect the screen from overheating. What a wasted opportunity. This is frankly infuriating, especially as Eligu recently announced the release of a mini heater for its products. It's on the list of optional extras if you buy this printer. But for me, this should be included as standard and in fact incorporated into the user interface, just as we've seen done on the Frozen Revo. Oh, and before I forget, it does have a power resume function, which I haven't tested as I was too busy sulking about the heater. I accused the Saturn III Ultra of having startup diagnostics that were nothing more than window dressing. But when it comes to the Ultra 4, judging by the movement and whirring noises, I actually think these are really doing something. In the past, I can recall praising any cubic for including doggy files with their printers, making tuning in resins that little bit easier. Well, Eligu have gone one better and included this facility within the user interface. Simply choose a model for use comparison and it should print out four of these using different time settings. I think this is a brilliant idea and I'd love to see it on all printers from now on. However, after several attempts, I couldn't get this to work. Give it one file 
expecting it to duplicate to the correct number and it prints just one and very exposed at that. Give it four files so that it doesn't have to be clever enough to multiply and you do get variations, but nothing like they should be. I desperately hope that this is a firmware issue that can be easily fixed as it really is such a good idea. Inside there's dual linear rails and ball screw I believe for smooth and reliable arm movement. There's also a fitted camera that is actually AI powered. In addition to plotting the enslavement of humankind, this AI actually watches the print, monitoring for failure detection. I understand it also enables time-lapse photography. This clever bit of monitoring comes via the motherboard developed by our buddies at Cheetu Box. To access it, you'll need Cheetu Box Pro and a freely downloadable bit of software called Cheetu Manager. Clicking this button activates the manager which happily searches for the printer, but in my case never actually found it. Thus, I'm unable to say whether it works at all. It's certainly connected to the internet okay. In the short time that I've had it, it's had no less than three firmware updates. It's great to know that Eligur on the case working out any bugs. And it's even better to know that the printer will always be up to date. Disturbed by this apparent Cheetu Box dedicated feature, I contacted Leechy to see whether they would have any slicing issues. And for those like me that want to choose the slicer they use, I'm pleased to say that Leechy is already compatible with the Saturn 4s, which means that other slicers are no doubt on the case too. When it comes to the business of the camera, Cheetu Box have taken the altruistic approach to leave this as open source software. However, whether Leechy and other slicing companies are able to offer these live monitoring features that are apparently available to anyone but me, time will have to tell. Looking upwards a little, there's an access point for an external air filter. And if clean air is important to you, you may need one. Eligu has been supplying these admittedly fairly underpowered air filters with their printers for a couple of years now but no longer it seems. I can't find any USB ports to power them, so it suggests Eligu are strong arming consumers to buy filters as additional equipment, or simply live with resin odors. Suddenly the Eligu mate doesn't seem such a friend anymore. The screen is a 10 inch 12K model, which surprised me as any cubic and frozen have already released machines using the 14K screen, which I confess has impressed me. But let's be fair here, the differences between the 12 and 14K are negligible. Furthermore, Eligu are satisfied that their COB and Fresnel lens produce a smoother surface. What is truly innovative though is this. Eligu are employing a tilt mechanism to aid print release. And I have to say, I'm very excited about this. Normally, of course, the build plate rises from the FEB, trying to pull the print free. And if you've ever tried to pull a plunger from a flat surface, you'll understand how truly important suction forces can be. This clever device actually tilts forward peeling the print from the FEP and reducing suction forces. This is the sort of innovative thinking that I like to see. It's a simple and effective idea that Eligu claims improves print speed. But I'll come to that in a moment. So thanks partly to this tilting mechanism and most specifically to a force sensitive chip incorporated into the Z arm, the Saturn IV Ultra is completely self-leveling, which is just as well as there's no adjustment screws on the plate. But giving credit where it's due, this really seems to work. On their website, Eligu state that to achieve 150 millimeters per hour, that their standard settings must be used. 
Now, I did get this USB stick with a copy of G2 Box on it. And this was the only profile provided. Eligu has sent me a bottle of this resin, so I assume this is the one they want me to use. The sharp-eyed will have already noticed a lot of missing settings from this. And that's because, thanks to the tilting device, we don't need to worry about lift speed, lift height, etc. I produced this admittedly small test print to give this resin and these settings a thorough testing. Now, it needs to be mentioned that on the UI, there's actually two speed settings, high and low. So obviously, I had this set to high. This was the print I produced, and given that it's tiny, it's not bad. But as for speed, it took about 56 minutes for a 25mm print. Just because I'm me, I had to see what would happen if I repeated the exercise on low speed. Other than taking a little longer at 70 minutes, I don't really see any changes in print quality. Purely to give the Ultra 4 the best possible print advantages, I opted to use Frozen Aqua 8K resin from this point on, using these settings which, in theory, should actually improve speed a little. Sure enough, that's a little faster at just 50 minutes, and whether or not it's better print quality, or whether that's just the colour, I'll let you decide for yourself. And finally, repeating this exercise on low speed achieved 65 minutes. For me, this proves there's little difference in quality between the speed differences. So I used nothing but high speed for all the prints that follow. So again, coming back to alleged fast printing. We at best managed 50 minutes for a 25mm print. And doing a little maths, this tells us that the best I actually achieved was 30mm per hour, which is a long way from 150. Now there could be a profile out there and maybe a resin choice that will improve matters, but from what I'm seeing here, as per usual with just about every company claim about speed, it's marketing hype on steroids. Now before moving on to proper printing, I should mention that Eligu also provide this slop tray. At least, that's what I think it is. It only fits on when the lid is in the upright position, so my guess is it's there to catch drips. It's horrible, flimsy and weak if I'm honest. Personally, I think that they shouldn't have bothered and then passed these savings on to the consumer. Starting with the Amalabs Town test print as always, I think it's fair to agree with Eligu that this is a nice smooth print with excellent detail. And again, to be fair, every picture that follows is equally detailed, either with or without anti-aliasing. So what do I think of the Eligu Saturn IV Ultra? Frankly, Eligu was stupid not to include a heater in this unit, and that's a must-have extra if you live in a cool environment at a cost of $55. And stupidity is certainly possible from a company that forgets to put a handle on an easy access lid. The AI camera is intelligently plotting my downfall in the dark, whilst refusing to let me see what it sees. But hopefully, on other printers, this might actually work. And speed claims, like pretty much every speed claim we've ever seen, is bogus unless there's a profile out there that Eligu didn't share with me. But this annoyingly angled user interface is pleasant to use, and features like the built-in doggy file are a fabulous idea, if we can get them to work. I love how it updates itself regularly, and I am thrilled by the tilting mechanism that not only gives us easy peel-off prints, but also an interesting take on self-leveling that really does seem to work. The price right now is $429 for this model, which isn't too bad. And unlike the Saturn III Ultra, I think you get plenty of innovation here for that money. This makes it approximately $30 more than the Anycubic M5S Pro, 
which does have a heater and also a 14K screen. But that, of course, doesn't have a handle-free flip-top lid like the Ultra. And whilst it is self-leveling, it doesn't have a camera nor a funky tilt plate either. It's up to you what features you feel you need. But one thing I can categorically say about the Saturn IV Ultra is that it prints very well. And ultimately, that's what we really want from our printers. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and thanks for watching.